Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. Welcome into this Photoshop tutorial where today we're going to take a look at getting rid of flyaway hairs using a little technique that I think is maybe the most effective way to do this here in Photoshop. Uh, if you do enjoy this video, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can check out all the Photoshop and photography related tutorials coming in the near future and all the other good stuff that's on the channel. Let's jump into Photoshop now and check this thing out. Alrighty, so here we are in Photoshop, and if I grab my zoom tool, I can just zoom in, and I can see that she does, in fact, have a bunch of flyaway hairs, and oftentimes, I, the client will ask you to just get rid of this stuff. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and get rid of some of these flyaway hairs for her. Now, the first thing that I would point out is, I don't like to get rid of every single little wisp and flyaway, especially when it comes to this kind of smaller stuff along the hair. We might, we might clean it up a little bit, but if you make the whole edge of the hair completely, perfectly smooth, then it just doesn't look realistic anymore. In terms of cleaning up this stuff over here, this stuff is all the kind of stuff that we want to clean up, right? Like those kind of crazy, you know, I'm out of here kind of hairs. We want to kind of clean that stuff up. So here's what I like to do. First and foremost, create a new layer. So we're working on a new layer. It's a nice non-destructive way uh, to work. And I'll just name this layer flyaways or something like that. And then I like to go ahead and grab my healing brush. So it's not the spot healing brush, not this guy here, but rather the second one in line, the healing brush tool. And here on the healing brush tool, I am first going to make sure that current and below is what I'm sampling. Now, in terms of a diffusion, you probably want to go with a pretty big diffusion. This is kind of the amount of blurriness or blending blur that's going to be on the edge of your brush. If you go with one, it's just going to be, it's just, it's not going to blend as nicely. So I'll go up to five or six, something like that should work fine for what we're doing. Uh, current and below, just because we're up on a blank layer, but we want to sample from the stuff underneath. And then the mode, I want to set it to replace. So once I have that, I'll zoom in and I'll begin working around her hair. So I'll just clean up some of this stuff down here. I will um, grab the, that tool and I'll hold down alter option and just sample somewhere out here and begin just gently painting over the hair. I, I try to sample stuff that's relatively close to what I'm covering up and you'll see why here in a moment. Because if you go sample and stuff like way out here, even if you're theoretically over a solid gray background, the gray that's out over here may be enough shade of a difference than the gray that should be here at the edge of her hair that it'll really be noticeable when you sort of back out and look at the image from further away. So we'll clean up some of this stuff here. And sometimes this soft edge can really um, kill some of the realism. In this case, I think it's working just fine for us. But if you do need to work with a hard edge brush, that is completely fine. Um, in fact, maybe I'll right click here and boost the hardness to about 50% or so. And I'll come in down here along the edge of the hair down here and just wipe away and clean up some of that stuff, kind of smooth out uh, that area of her hair. And then I can just bounce right up here along the edge of her hair, just going right along this. And you know, you can, you can make it as even and uniform or as rough as you like. It's all a matter of, you know, you, you want something that almost is kind of random, if you will, because you don't want it to look like, oh, they just took a brush and, you know, painted, you know, a new edge to her hair, because that right there is not going to look very realistic. Then you would paint over all of these, all these little hairs, and I'm, I'm speeding the video up here as I go through this, uh, because I want to show you one last thing before I let you go in terms of uh, how I like to blend this trick uh, for once and for all at the very end. And there we go. We pretty much wrapped that up. Now you can see here that could probably be cleaned up a little bit. And because we're up on our own layer, maybe I'd throw a mask on it. But for the sake of keeping it just nice and simple here, I'm going to grab the eraser, which I use so infrequently. I had a difficult time finding it right there. I'm going to increase my hardness and I'll reduce the size a little bit. And what I'll do is I'll just come in there and just erase that away to just build out the edge of her hair a little bit more. And up this up on its own layer, we can shut it off. You can see there's all that flyaway stuff. We turn it on, shut it off. And if if you see any kind of noticeable anything, you can just simply reduce the opacity of the flyaways later, layer a little bit. Now, it is going to start bringing some of that hair back. But as you zoom out in a way, it makes it, number one, much more difficult to see. And it'll just give you blending that sometimes you need. Now, sometimes it'll look great at 100%. And here, I think I think we're, we're doing pretty good at 100% if Photoshop's going to let me get back to 100% there. I think we're doing pretty good at 100%, but it is a, quite a drastic difference. And the next step, by the way, would be just filling out the edges of the hair. Now, I do want to just make a side note here. I tend to prefer using the healing brush tool set to replace because I get better edge blending than if I just go and use the clone stamp tool. And this, again, can be incredibly important when you're working over solid color backgrounds so when somebody doesn't look at the photo, it doesn't look like you've outlined her in just a slightly different shade of whatever your background color is. I would create another layer here and I would call this like, 
hair fill, something like that. And I would just zoom into areas like this here. And once more, I would use the same exact brush set to replace. And I would go through, well, let's try this actually set to normal. Let's see if that does a better job here. Nope, that actually looks pretty bad. Let's right click, make sure our hardness is turned all the way up. And this would be a case where we want to turn diffusion way down and try painting over this and see what we get. You can see we can just go ahead and fill in her hair and just make it look like it's a little bit more full here near the edges. You, know, you can fill in stuff like this and kind of make it look, you know, half decent. You go in and just paint over areas so you don't, it doesn't look like you have duplicating patterns. And you could even go in and, and fill an area like this and really begin to make your hair look like it is very, very uh, full. And you can see now when I zoom out, it just fills that in a little bit. There's before and there is after. So it makes a little bit of a difference. And again, if it's just too much, just reduce the opacity a little bit and something like that, just to add a little bit more of that realism, yet still adding that thickness and sort of weight and volume uh, to her hair. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. You can see a simple little technique. It's nice and easy, but it's pretty effective. And it's something I've been using for a little while. So I figured, you know what? It's about time I jump on here and share it with the good people on the internet. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you really enjoyed it, consider supporting the channel by picking up a copy of my Photoshop retouching course. It'll really help you up your game when it comes to retouching your own photos. I think you'll really enjoy it. And of course, it helps support what we do here at tutvid.com here on this channel. Helps me continue bringing you these videos. Uh, and guys, for using the healing brush in kind of an interesting way on a new layer non-destructively to get rid of flyaway hairs. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.